And tonight on ABC TV, we're going to hear all about that revolution. You just heard there, though, from Michael Musket. He's the principal of Cambria College, and he joins us now in the studio, along with Professor Field Rickards, who was one of the education experts drafted in to help turn things around. Gentlemen, good morning, and welcome to News Breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You've been sitting there looking and feeling a bit anxious, but what we've been <laughs> saying to you is, are you kidding me? Uh, we're the ones who would be so anxious if we walked into your environment, the awesome responsibility of having to educate the next generation. I could do it Michael? You know I love it. Um, I love being around the school and my favourite part of the day is just to walk around, <laughs> say hello, greet the students, notice things, ask questions. That's my, that's that's your my environment. Yeah. Yes. So take us back to the start of this journey, we'll bring you in in a moment field sure. as well. Uh, how bad a situation was your school in going back eight, nine, ten years? Yeah, it, was, it was pretty bad, it was a pretty gloomy situation. Um, every data set that schools use to measure their their performance was very low. Student attendance, uh, expulsions, um, surveys from parents and students and staff, and most important of all, as student achievement data, yeah, numeracy was literacy. very poor. Mm. Yeah. So, what did you decide to do? Well, we had to get our act together, and first of all, as a as an organisation, as a school, we had to we had to get the inside right. So the first thing we started on, we, we used a, a model of school improvement uh, developed by Zabar, Marshall and Kimber. Um, and the first step there was to get the leadership of the school focused, strong, with a clear vision forward. Field, I hear this phrase again and again, that the leadership of the school, the leadership team, the direction, the tone, the attitude set by the leadership team is everything in a school. Is that an exaggeration? It's uh, certainly an important part of the equation, but uh, in terms of student learning, the greatest impact on student learning is indeed the effectiveness of the teacher in the classroom. But without the leadership, you're not going to develop the effectiveness of the teacher. This is complex. Cha as, you, as you will see on the series, it's yeah. a really complex, challenging profession. And, and some teachers are more effective than others. And I think what Michael's achieved is, in fact, found the most effective people and they work in teams. So that what we want to do is improve the effectiveness of every teacher mm -hmm. and recognise the ex excellence of those who are most effective. Getting down to ten tags, how do you improve the effectiveness of a teacher? Mm -hmm. What makes a good teacher, Michael? Well, you have, to have, um, you have to have a clear model that you're working towards. And what we, what we did that was of great assistance to our teachers was develop the Cambria College model of instruction. This is how we teach at Cambria College and it is developed from the evidence base provided by the, Mon the, the Melbourne Graduate S School of Education. Which is where you are of course Field and this is interesting to me so here in this experiment we have the practical and sitting over there where you are we have the theoretical so it, over this period of time which shifted more which, which actually realised that the, the in a sense had a, had a greater connection to a better outcome? Well, I think the biggest shift, in fact, was a paradigm shift that teachers are more than people who just deliver information. I think teachers have to be people who understand that students are on a developmental path, yeah. that every student's different, and they have to be able to evaluate the, imp the impact they've had on learning. In tonight's episode, Grace Wong is one of our graduates from 2014, and she started your school last year, Michael. She's confronted with a grade 8 class of mathematics and their abilities vary from grade three to grade nine. Mm. So it's... it's, it's and that's, it, that's not uncommon, is it? No, no, that's, this, is, this is fairly standard. So we set out in... Two, we, the Graduate School of Education, set out in 2008 to really rethink the whole training of teachers. And we call it a clinical teaching program. Practitioners who can evaluate the needs of every student intervene and then evaluate the impact they've had on learning. Complex, challenging stuff and some are better than others. So we, there's a whole lot of things we need to change education and how do teachers work in teams, uh, collaboratively, recognising the difference in expertise. I mean, we recognise difference in expertise in every other profession. Yeah. But we seem to assume in education that anybody can teach. They just need passion. They just need to stand in front of the class. And in fact, some policies in politics in recent years have said they just don't teach enough. I can't sit there for hours on end just listening. The, the, the most listening to more information and more information, it's about, mm. it's not just the surface learning, it's deep learning as well. So this, this is incredibly complex and I think this four part series really illustrates the complexity and the challenge of teaching. And, and what Michael's achieved, uh, and there are other schools that do it as well, but what he's achieved in, in a space of eight years is extraordinary. Bottom 10%, 10% 
top 25 per cent. And, uh, and it really it sends a message, I believe, to politicians that if they want to make a change, if they seriously want to make a change, then they need to set some long-term goals, not short-term goals, and focus on focus on the teacher. Yep, and there has been a lot of politics, as you say, Field, uh, on this issue for many years now. And whenever the education debate is raised, class sizes yeah. is usually up at the top of the agenda. What has been the practical experience at your school about class sizes, big, small, in terms of the most effective way of teaching young kids? To me, uh, probably class size is not the biggest issue. What I, if I had uh, my way, I'd be reducing face-to-face -face teaching time. Okay. Because and, and, and putting what in in in, in uh, its in place. The, in the gap, yeah. What what I need to create more time for in my school is teacher collaboration, teacher planning time, teach, teachers uh, strategising as to what what are the um, approaches with different cohorts of students that are going to have maximum impact. So teachers working together and leaving the, uh, the students with more self-directed learning time? Uh, n n no, they'd still... It's just reducing the number of hours that number in, of hours in the classroom. teachers... Yeah. Mm. What about teacher pay? Um, is that a big issue? And in terms of the excellence that you speak of in the skill and the ability field, does that go to that as well? Should we be paying teachers um, differently uh, according to their abilities and their skills? Absolutely. And, and in fact, uh, there are structures within the Australian Institute of, of Teaching and School Leadership, which talks about graduate, proficient, accomplished, and lead teachers. And lead teachers need to be those people that lead and should be paid accordingly. Paid Absolutely. Accord. And, and do you agree with that? Look, the the only reservation I have is that industrially it's a very complex issue. I'm sure. And uh, that's that's where you know you have to work out. Uh, is, are you going to come out winning by taking this approach or are you going to create a lot of uh, problems? You realise you'll get lots of applications now from all our viewers <laughs> around the country. How, how open is your enrolment, Michael? <laughs> well, it's tightening up because we're filling, you know, the enrolments are coming in thick and fast. I, I can just imagine. Because yeah. mm. um, success uh, breeds success. Look, guys, real, a real pleasure to meet you this morning and to talk about this. I'm so looking forward to seeing it because it's, a, it's an argument and an issue right at the heart of the Australian community right now. So well done on what you've done. Go well. Thank, thank you. you We're Thanks. excited. Yeah, I'm thank sure you, you are, Michael Thanks Field. Thank Thanks. you. You can catch the full episode of Revolution School. That's tonight at half past eight on ABC TV. I'm putting that one down as must not miss TV. Now, in October last